Welcome back to another video by yours truly, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be talking about uh, Aventurine's kit now that it's been revealed with more specifics. Uh, they've also revealed his signature light cone uh, in full. So we're going to go over that, address the pros and cons of each thing so that you guys have a more profound understanding with regards to how his kit functions. So let's get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with his traces, make it very digestible for you guys. For every 100 of Aventurine's defense that exceeds a certain value, increases on crit rate up to a maximum limit. Now, they don't provide the numerical values. They always wait to the last minute in case they want to change up something, nerf or buff it last chance before it goes live. Uh, in case you don't know this fun fact, once Hoyo drops a character, they will not change the character's kit ever again. They only give like indirect buffs through extension of other units that come out or like light cones and so on and so forth. So that's why they always wait until the last minute if they want to make any changes. Anyways, with that being said, the way this first trace works is pretty much strive to give him like 35 to 4,000 defense, same as you would do with like a Chapar. And you're gonna have a fat amount of crit rate given to you for free 99, like just built in to his kit. They reward you for building him with defense. Think Jing Liu. You know why everybody loves Jing Liu? Because when you pop Jing Liu's ult and go into it, she gets 48% crit value for freaking free, or 50% if you crown her uh, her a trace entirely. So 50% crit rate is given to Jing Liu for absolutely free just for going into her ultimate. In terrain, it's the same line of concept, except it's it's rewarding you it for building defense on them so hopefully that makes sense why by the way if you take that just very simple explanation into concept that means you can build a crit damage body on him instead of a crit rate body providing him with more crit damage massive amounts of crit damage or if you're going for the sustainable side of things you can put a defensive body on him instead of a crit rate uh, so keep that in mind moving on to the second one when battle starts grants all allies a fortified wager shield grants them a shield whose shield effect is going to be equal to a certain percentage of the one provided by the skill lasting for a certain number of turns what they pretty much just told you is that when you go into battle and there's an adventurine on your team you get a free shield proc period from his skill right you just get a skill shield for completely free to your whole entire party so that's massive because that means going into battle, you can open up with an auto attack instead of having to activate a shield to protect your party. So you start off with good uh, skill point positivity going into battle, which is nice. Moving on to bingo. This one's quite lengthy and uh, intricate. I'm gonna try my best to explain it as uh, as best as I can. After an ally with fortified wager, Aventurine Shield, launches a follow-up attack, Aventurine accumulates one blind bet point. This is important before we even go any further. It's telling you that you can't build blind bet points unless an ally launches a follow up attack with his shield on. They have to have the shield on his shield in particular. So this means that keeping uh, up shields like the uptime of Aventurine's fortified wager shield is going to be very important to building blind bet points, because if they just follow up attack, but they don't have his shield on, he's not going to get the blind bet point. This means you're gonna have to micromanage Aventurine shield on the party. Now, granted, he's gonna do a fantastic job at keeping them shields up, but there will be some scenarios where you're going up against some enemies that are hitting like trucks, and you might have to manually a cast Aventurine skill, which is gonna butcher your skill point of positivity in that, in that scenario, just to ensure that he's building up these blind bat points and triggering his follow-up passive. Hopefully that makes sense because it is important. People can overlook this and think, oh, he's very skill point positive. Well, he is until you have to recast that shield so that he's stacking his blind bet points up. Now, this effect can trigger up to a certain number of times, it means it has a cap to how many blind bet points you can build, uh, but it resets at the start of Aventurine's turn. So you trigger three follow-up attacks with Topaz, um, Aventurine, and Doctor Ratio, right? Let's say it's a three stack cap. That means you get three blind bet points from triggering those three follow-up attacks. If you were to trigger another one, it's not gonna give him more until his turn comes up again. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm telling you this shit is intricate, so I'm trying my best to explain it. After Aventurine launches his talents follow-up attack, right? So you fill up the blind bet stacks. Boom, now he's gonna make it rain. Follow-up attack on everyone on the field or at random. Uh, it's gonna provide all allies with a fortified wager that can block a certain amount of damage. So you get another shield that's stackable with the shield that's already on your party. And additionally, it's gonna grant a more shield that can block a certain amount of damage to the ally with the lowest shield effect, lasting for a certain number of terms. It lasts a long time, uh, just know that. But basically, it's telling you, 
you need a lot of shields and he's going to provide those shields for you however there are some intricate details in there that i mentioned that you do need to take note of so again i said that was long-winded hopefully it made sense because that shit was not easy to explain uh moving on if you want to stop here and look at the leveling materials and the things required go ahead and do so uh, but we're going to move on um his technique his technique is going to be the most a uh, cringe thing to rng play around with because you're obviously going to try and go for the maximum defense value right let's go ahead and talk about it real quick okay so when you use this technique you randomly obtain one effect from three types of defense boost effects repeated use of this technique results in the retention of the effect with the highest value it's it's literally gamba gamba at its finest gambarine uh, when the next battle starts increase all allies defense by the corresponding value lasting for a certain number of turns so i like that it gives everyone this defensive value increase because if a dps comes out down the line that scales with defense you're going to automatically think oh avenger rain 100 right but the other thing that's cool about it is that that defensive value is going to add to your sustainability as a team on top of him providing shields i actually do wonder if that defense does increase the uh tenacity of his shield and durability of his shield as well but i'm not sure on that all in all you're going to be rolling this to try and get the highest value it's going to be a lot of gamba bro especially if you're trying to do like meta runs with a sustainer or clear times with the sustainer like aventurine it's going to be a lot of re-rolls and resets trying to get that maximum defense value because that's going to also directly tie into increasing his defense but it also lasts for a certain number of turns which is kind of unfortunate it'd be nice if it was just like given to you for the entirety of the fight as opposed to a number of turns especially considering the rng a bit of a negative uh, moving on to his basic attack it just deals damage based off of his defense his entire kit deals damage based off of his defense uh, uh going on to his talent for any single ally with fortified wager their effect resistance isn't going is going to increase and when they get attacked aventurine gains blind bet so every ally with fortified wager not only do they have a thick ass shield on they also have a massive amount of effect resistance making it very hard to be crowd controlled by the enemy and then when they get hit while that shield is on them it gives him a blind bet stack which i told y'all about that earlier proceeding on when aventurine has fortified wager he can resist crowd control debuffs i would hope so as a as a sustainer doing all that this effect can trigger again after a certain number of turns aventurine additionally gains blind bet after getting attacked so if aventurine gets attacked and your enemies are getting attacked uh he's gonna get blind bet stacks which is nice but the, the negative about this is gaining these stacks is reliant on your team getting hit which is not good for meta or like you know trying to be efficient in runs having to rely on the enemy to hit you in order to build stacks it's a bit of a negative however in the simulated universe that's a massive w preservation path you're getting hit the shield value is dealing damage back to him aventurine is absolutely tippity top of the meta for preservation path no doubt about it he's gonna be great for simulated universe uh especially the harder versions of it upon reaching a certain number of blind bet points aventurine consumes the point to launch multiple hits of follow-up attacks essentially once your blind bets hit a certain number he's going to trigger a follow-up attack with each hit dealing imaginary damage to a single random random enemy blind bet has an upper limit so i want to talk about the single random enemy part this is good single target damage when it says random enemy because if there's no enemies left then it's all one enemy not only is it going to be better single target damage but it's also going to be better shield breaking damage too and if you pair him up with dr ratio they do some monstrous shield breaking damage it's actually kind of wild so that's worth taking into consideration but the other thing that's worth taking into consideration is how consistent can he provide this follow-up attack or rock this follow-up attack here's the problem with the venturine and also the positive if you're running him with like a team like dr ratio and topaz and then him him, him himself he's gonna be triggering that follow-up attack a lot you're gonna get the maximum value out of him with a team like that but if you're running him on a team where nobody else is triggering follow-up attacks that means the only way this man is going to get blind bet stacks to trigger a follow-up attack is if he himself is taking damage or your team's taking damage Case in point, you can only get the blind bet stacks by y'all getting hit. That's not good. It's not a good look, which means he's really more niche towards follow-up attack synergies in terms of like for veteran players, meta players, 
and day one players, right? You, this is not an incentive for us. This is actually a negative unless you're running them with a follow-up comp. However, for free-to-play players, you're just worrying about staying alive or newer beginner players. You're just worrying about staying alive and he's gonna do that job fantastic. So just worth putting that out there for what it's worth. So his skill provides allies with a fortified wager shield lasting for a certain number of turns, long number of turns. When fortified wager is gained repeatedly, the shield effect can last, uh, can stack up to a certain limit. So it's shield stackable. You're only really gonna proc this skill if you don't have any shield on your allies. You're gonna have to use that to reactivate it, which again, can cut into skill point positivity depending on many different scenarios. But for the most part, he seems like he can be skill point positive, provided that you're upkeeping shields on your teammates at all times that is going to tie into this bad boy right here this bingo final uh trace if you trigger his follow-up attack he's going to keep giving shields to people so it's going to be reliant on you triggering that which means he's pretty much pretty niche with the follow-up attack synergies right because you're not going to be able to trigger this follow-up to then give your team more shields if you're not running a follow-up attack heavy uh, comp like a Dr. Ratio Topaz composition. If you're not running that comp, then you're gonna have to rely on activating his skill to upkeep the shield on your teammates. That's very important. Anyways, finally moving on to his ultimate, randomly gains a certain number of blind bet points. Another Gamba factor, which means when you pop his ultimate, you're gonna deal some damage and then you're gonna roll a certain number and ideally you want that number to be as high as possible so he can then trigger his follow-up attack immediately after the ultimate but let's go ahead and read it gains a certain number of blind bet points then inflicts unnerved on a single target enemy for a certain number of turns and deals imaginary damage to the single target enemy the 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 weakness break of this ult is actually very high so it's amongst the some of the highest uh especially considering he is a sustainer massive incentive again with dr ratio uh, when any ally hits an unnerved enemy target the crit damage dealt increases so his ult inflicts a debuff on a single target it also only deals single target damage and then it deals a massive amount of weakness break which obviously I haven't provided that here but then it increases the crit damage dealt to that target so the debuff is huge right however the negative of this is that you only can apply a debuff in the entirety of his kit you can only apply the debuff with his ultimate and if he's not energy recharge savvy that's going to be a negative because you have to get his ultimate up in order to even do this furthermore to deal damage you also want to spam his ultimate as well right i'm just going to go ahead and keep it a stack with y'all one of his weaknesses is having to use his ult because he doesn't really have a very energy recharge friendly kit now he does have something going for him which is he's a preservation path so his taunt value is higher than everybody else's but it's not high enough to the point where you can always rely on him getting hit uh so that he can battery himself when you get hit you get energy recharge right so that's a negative i'm going to make a separate video conveying to you guys my concerns for adventure rain with regards to functionality and truly being viable and an option for you to pick up outside of free-to-play friendly units because there's a lot there's a lot to discuss he can pump fake a lot of people who thinks he's going to be better than what he's actually going to be i do think he's great i just think there's a lot of things to consider in here that are hidden between the details so to speak let's go ahead and talk about the signature light cone okay so his signature light cone off rip this is insane defense based value like it, it's higher than japard's defense value so they definitely made sure to power creep and give you your money's worth in terms of just base that defense and any defensive multipliers he's going to receive, which he receives a lot of them from his own kit. This is going to come into handy big time because he's going to make the overall defensive value, uh, flat value, much bigger. So that's huge. Uh, he does not care about attack. So this is like literally a useless stat. Uh, and the HP is okay. It's all right. Uh, it's not bad though. Like that is yeah it's pretty standard for uh five star light cones anyways increase the wearer's defense by 40 percent right this is obviously good every single thing he does pertaining to damage is revolving around his defense and his defense alone on top of landing crits so this is obviously good not to mention it makes his shield value bigger but this is just like inflated you don't really need this it's not it's not it's funny a casual a casual and somebody who doesn't understand this this game on the nerdy ass level that i do you're gonna look at this and be like oh my god it's so good I ah, it's inflated bro's already gonna be sitting at four thousand defense another 40 percent is not that big of a deal i promise you it's in 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 terms of like the damage he's dealing the multipliers 
that extra 40% is really not that big of a deal. I promise. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you guys. You know, if it's anybody who's going to keep it a stack, it's me. When the wearer provides a shield to an ally, the wearer's crit damage increases by 40%, lasting for two turns. He's always going to be providing shields to allies, right? So you, you pretty much get a free 40% crit damage. Again, this is great, but it's also not that great. Why? Well, his kit is missing one significant factor for damage that can be made up with units like Ron May. His kit has virtually no damage bonus in it at all. So this would have been much better if it was damage bonus instead of crit damage in terms of the multiplier. I understand the formula profoundly because he's already going to be building a shit ton of crit damage in his uh, damage dealing kit. For the body, if you really want to pop off with ratio, I mean, not ratio, adventure rain, you're going to put a crit damage body on him. That you're not going to put a defense body on him. That's for like comfort and sustain. Crit damage body on him. Then you're going to build crit damage in the stats since he already has a massive amount of crit rate. So this pump fake, telling you. And if if anybody who's worth their salt as a TC, they will admit that this is a pump fake. If they don't admit it, then they're not that good of a TC, in my personal opinion. <laughs> All right, just saying. Now I don't know who's saying what out there because I don't watch other content because I try to preserve my own thoughts for myself. But I promise you, this shit ain't all that. Now, finally, the most important uh, selling point of his kit also has a negative to it, and that's this garbage. When, uh, when the wearer's follow-up attack hits an enemy target, there's a 100% base chance effect hit rate, oh, I didn't mean to do that, effect hit rate reliant in a signature light cone on a character that has no other effect hit rate reliant things in his kit is not a good look in fact that is nasty work okay that's absolutely nasty work anyways let's let's figure out there's a 100 base chance to increase the damage taken by the attacked enemy target by 10 percent lasting for two turns the good thing about this is says by the attacked enemy target when you triggers follow-up attack it's it can do aoe and hit everybody on the field so this means you could put this 10 percent debuff and increase the received damage to everybody on the field which is a good thing furthermore the way it's worded, increase the damage taken by the attacked enemy target. That's a stronger um, damage bonus. It's not additive. This is multiplicative. It, it goes in a separate multiplier. So this is, this is actually not a regular 10% damage bonus. It's very strong. However, the fact that you got an RNG, or not RNG, an effect hit rate reliant perk in this signature light con is garbage. This should have been taken out and they should have just said when you hit attacked enemy targets, you just get your 10% multiplicative damage bonus given to everybody that gets hit by him. This is a signature light cone that is very expensive, very in premium. Do not hit me with no cringe ass effect hit rate inside of it. What the hell is this, bro? But apart from all that, the other thing that's positive about this is it's a debuff, which means Acheron can take advantage of this for the people who are going to pick up the light cone. And Dr. Ratio can take advantage of this for ensuring that he triggers his follow up attack because they do need debuffs on them in order for him to trigger it. And he a uh, uh, Aventurine is going to be a best in slot for Dr. Ratio. So this is overall for me, this light cone is meh. It is meh, right now, if you're somebody who just like you don't care you spend money carelessly and you pick up shit yeah of course it's going to provide value i would hope so it's an expensive signature limited banner light cone but is it something that's groundbreaking uh absolutely not no it's good for uh acheron and doctor ratio maybe some future character that comes out down the line but hey i'd if i were you i'd save my gems i'd keep this there's plenty of four star options that adventuring can make use of that he's gonna provide value in. This is garbage. I'm trying to convince you guys to spend more money, sell you a problem uh, with his light cone. That's gonna be the solution to it. And for that matter, that's gonna wrap up my analysis of the signature light cone as well as his kit review. I will be dropping another video explaining to you guys my uh, uh, unbiased and objective thoughts on the value of Aventurine. I think he has a lot of value to give in certain areas of our community. And he has no value to give and he's an absolute pump fake in others. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side.